Well, to say it was a long day is an understatement. Um, I like the energy in the dugout, the guys that you know, played a lot of innings today, you know, kept their energy level up. It's good to see. Um, kind of got us off to a good start, game two. And, um, you know, and uh, Carson did as well. And that's the kind of starts that you got to have. Games can be won early. Everybody puts so much emphasis on the back end, but there's a lot to be said about those getting off to a good start. And um, that old saying, you're only momentum is only as good as your next day starting pitcher. And we like our guys. We did Some of them didn't have the best of luck. Some were self-inflicted. Others were you know, mishaps. Uh, couldn't get a call here or there. And um, again, it was a good day. What was it like to see the response after the loss yesterday and with uh, going down early in the game and then the guys, the offense really fights back early and puts up some crooked numbers? Yeah, that's that's what we're about. Um, you know, they kind of beat us at our own game. We're a big inning team. That, you know, the more guys you get on and somebody pops a double or takes a hit by pitch, whatever way we can score. And, um, you know, they they were chomping at the bit to get back out there. So we just got some some really banged up guys right now, too. You know, it's hard 348 days of not playing and uh, all of a sudden you got to turn it up. And there's nothing like simulating nine innings of real competition. You, you try in scrimmages, but it, there's nothing like it. How did you kind of evaluate what you uh, saw from Carson in his debut? Obviously, some stuff out of his control happened in the first inning and maybe didn't handle that the best, but really settled in after that, put together a decent outing. Yeah, he did. And that was good to see because the last thing you want is um, not to be able to stretch guys a little bit. You know, they go into their first start, you know, they're roughly 60 pitches and, you know, in three weeks span and we built them up to 60 pitches. So you want to get past that. And he did overcome a little bit of adversity and, um, you know, a couple of calls didn't go his way, and I, I saw what I wanted to see. Yesterday, you were a little displeased with the approach from the hitters, I guess. What did you see today? I think you guys had um, less strikeouts and walks today. Yeah, and that goes hand in hand with what you're trying to do. And um, some guys kind of deviated a couple of pitches, which you can't do. The great ones never they stay with. Uh, exactly with that approach, and um, but all in all, it was it was definitely better. What did this weekend help tell you about your bullpen as you're learning more about them in real game situations? Yeah, there was two that we couldn't you know get in there. The game was on the line, and those critical outs when we feel like they're leverage situations. You know, Chaz is going to get the bulk of those as long as he's you know fresh and uh, twenty whatever pitches he threw yesterday, he laughed at me when I asked if he was all right. Um, you know, but Hunter Purdue and Andrew Armstrong and Wyatt Crowell were guys we wanted to, you know, get in there and, um, you know, it just didn't work out. But um, there's just, there's a lot of them. And I, I told him, I said, guys, you got to be patient. We got to stay in this together. We're going to try, try to keep you fresh, sharp. And here shortly, we're going to start getting into midweek games and, um, you know, everybody's going to get their, their time. Meet, uh, what you see there in the ninth inning with that bat of uh, Sakara, and and is that something you just noticed, or is that something you've kind of kept in the back pocket? Uh, in the back pocket, um, you know, our guys. That was the bat that a lot of our guys used, and it's white, and they banned it, and they, you know, our guys were nonstop. Hey, that's that's the bat. So, as a coach, that's what you do. You know, if, if critical point. You know, you have to do it. If I don't do it, then I lose respect to an awful lot of, you know, college guys. So, um, you know, it was a play that, um, you know, as a coach, you have to do. You know, had a chance to really flip momentum and get us into a pinch. And, um, you know, again, rules are the rules. Whether we agree with them or not, rules are the rules. As long. You know. Brett said it nicely. I guess me, you were displeased with the the offensive approach, you know, yesterday. And it's a long season, but you were ready to like I don't know, put fire and brimstone into those kids. This early on in a, in a season, do you know that your roster is, is mentally tough enough to take the hard coaching uh, so often and so early? Yeah, I do. Um, I think some of the young guys are starting to, to 
you know, learn that this is the way it's going to be. And it has to be. It's tried and true. It works. Um, you know, and just look at the guys that you idolize. Why in the world would we deviate from what they do? And um, we want to be able to not have, you know, all the shifts. And, you know, we're going to go foul line to foul line. The great ones do. And um, that's what we're striving for. But we're not changing. How much of a luxury is it to have Connor's experience on, on a Sunday, and especially in rubber matches like this? just seems like he was um, calm and cool the whole, the whole game. Yeah, it's real. Um, you, know, you know what you're going to get every time he goes out there. He may get hit, but he's not going to beat himself. And, um, you know, he was he actually walked three. Um, I want to go back and look at some of the pitches because it was, you know, I thought I thought there's a couple of times I was frustrated. But um, anyhow, he's Connor's Connor. You know what you're going to get. And you're right. It is a great luxury to have a guy on Sunday because most guys on Sundays aren't as consistent as him. Tyler's really, I would say, picked up right where he left off last year as a, as a freshman. I guess it, it may not be surprising anymore, but just how much does he continue to give you exactly what you need, the leadoff spot, grinding good at bats, kind of giving what the pitchers – or take advantage of what the pitchers give him, whatever that may be. Yeah, he's, um, you know, right where he needs to be. Um, you know, he's got to hurt his shoulder game one. Um, so we're going to get that figured out this week. Um, but, you know, he's – um. You know, he's a good hitter. You know, he's a good player. I shouldn't say he's just a hitter. Um, he's chomping at the bit to do what he can defensively, but um, it's a strong shoulder, and we tried to see how it felt when he couldn't throw. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but he's definitely had some really, really good at-bats. And um, that's what you want. The more pitches you can see, the better it is for your teammates, the better it is for you. And um, that joker sees a ton of pitches. Go to Lulu for the last one. Uh, Nander DeSantis not switching this year, hit from the right side. Obviously, the results were very good this weekend. But as a coach, for, from what you saw him doing at the plate, results notwithstanding, did you like what you saw out of him from the right side? Yes. Um, the, the fact that that's his natural side, his pitch selection is, is definitely better. If you think back to left-handed, there was quite a few times where you're like, whoa, well, what was that? And those have cut back. Still got room for improvement, like they all do. Um, but you know, he's um, you know, he's made made some good plays, and um, there's some stuff that we've got to clean up with, you know, decisions and end of game when you're just chasing outs, and um, and that falls on the coaches' staff. We'll we'll get that straight this week. We got a, I got a list longer than I've ever had, and I can't wait to get back to work Tuesday. Perfect. Thanks, coach. Thanks, guys.